So, welcome back students. Basically, in the last lecture, we have just started symmetry based strategies and we said that for symmetry based strategies, when you are trying to do a disconnection of a symmetrical molecule and mainly we said we are dealing with symmetrical molecule which does have a well defined sigma v. Now, mainly we discussed couple of designed uh, molecule uh, like rotene, 3 rotene, 5 rotene those molecules and we said in maximum cases we explore the redundant functionality, explore the redundant functionality and also we said that maintenance of symmetry throughout the pathway is very important and eventually we have tried to follow that guideline that symmetry maintenance. The starting material needs to be symmetrical or if the starting material is uh, Asymmetrical, it is always advisable to use those starting materials. So, symmetry maintenance is absolutely important for sigma V compound, sigma V containing compound, and we said that we are not going to discuss about the symmetric controlled reaction, which is the pericyclic reaction uh, in this particular forum because it is not, uh, uh, it, it will take too much time. So, we are not going to discuss it. Now, now we will uh, keep on discussing uh, the same strategies, and now here we will be trying to. Uh, take uh, some of the natural products uh, which does have a perfect sigma v and uh, how you can uh, follow this particular guideline the maintenance of symmetry for synthesizing those molecules or to provide a proper uh, guided heterosynthetic disconnection for those molecules. In very beginning we will talk, uh, talk about a natural product uh, which is also a perfectly symmetric sigma V containing molecule and the structure we need to be little bit careful. It is a cyclic ketone and the molecules name is civetone. Civetone. The civetone was basically isolated from the civet cat, civet cat which is normally lives in the Himalayan region, high altitude region. Now, civetone, the molecule name is civetone. Civetone is a perfectly sigma V containing molecule. The symmetry is there. Okay. So, now this is a basically I said naturally occurring molecule, natural product. It is a natural product. So, uh, it is not a designed molecule. Now, they said this molecule is a perfectly symmetrical probably the symmetry maintenance criteria we need to fulfill. And uh, now definitely as uh, if you see the structural features of this molecule, this molecule is basically having a carbonyl functionality and now the left hand side and right hand side are basically having a equal number of methylene groups. How many? It is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, 7 methylenes left hand side, right hand side 7 methylenes in between you have a z olefinic unit. So, uh, and the all together the ring size is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. This so, is basically a large ring is 18 uh, member, member ketone. The initial retro which was thought of for this molecule by doing a simple FGI and the disconnection was, uh, was proposed that the Z olefin which lies in the bottom part of the molecule can easily be constructed from the corresponding alkyne. This was usually proposed. So, if you have a simple FGI by using a hydrogenation with Lindler catalyst, you will be able to do it. Now, alkyne, you may ask that sir, alkyne is basically sp hybridized, is sp hybridized and as the ring structure is quite big enough, means that this bond has to be linear we wrote the bond in a bent fashion, but in reality this bond will be linear. 
to fulfill the criteria of SP. And as this bond size is pretty much larger, this alkyne can be accommodated here. But, but for normal rings, like if you have a cyclopentane kind of ring, you cannot have an alkyne due to severe ring strain because SP accommodation in a linear fashion cannot be uh, done in this small ring system. But fine, nevertheless, we will uh, keep on uh, using now. See, the initial starting metal is sigma V, this one also symmetry was maintained, symmetry was maintained. Now, the next uh, next disconnection which was uh, which was proposed or which was uh, performed by the researchers, uh, they, they, they proposed that if this alpha beta unsaturated ketone was used as a starting material and then basically you can reduce this alpha beta unsaturated ketone to get this cyclic ketone. Now, this part I will not write the CH 2, this part I will not write the CH 2 because you know that how many CH 2s are there. So, I will just put the alkyne here, this is the alkyne. So, I said that if you have this kind of fragment with this CH 2 n, this is basically contains CH 2 n, how many CH 2? 1, 2, 3, 4. So, now basically you are having 1, 2, this CH 2 is needs to be create. So, this was done then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, n is now 5. So, here also you are having CH 2 n, n is 5. Now, this alkyne as well as keto olefin uh, can be synthesized, people have been thought in a different way. Now, this molecule is also sigma v, this is also sigma v. So, now the next uh, retro which was proposed, if you see the earlier intermediate which you basically propose, it is having a uh, we will again draw it, it is basically having a diolefinic partner and this end and this end are basically linked, you are having a acetylenic unsaturation here. Now, I am saying that we will uh, try to do a intramolecular Wittig reaction, intramolecular Wittig reaction to construct intramolecular Wittig or you often talk about this reaction Horner Wurzwatt Emmons reaction to construct this compound. Uh, now, the Horner Wurzwatt Emmons reaction probably all of you know if you having RCHO you react to it corresponding phosphonate derivative in presence of a base. This reaction we have discussed earlier and it is possible you can basically get the alpha beta unsaturated ester. This is a very known reaction, oil known reaction. Now, here what I proposed. So, now if you have it is not a intramolecular Wittig actually it is basically a intermolecular Wittig. We propose that. Okay. So, this part this part you will be creating and this part you will be creating. So, this particular double bond, this particular double bond is coming from a Wittig fine. So, then I say that okay, in between if you can put this carbonyl and then the phosphonate is basically a bisphosphonate. So, we are using a bisphosphonate. something like this MeO OME. Now, this bisphosphonate, bisketophosphonate in principle having acidic hydrogen here which can be easily picked up by base. Now, the central carbonyl of this ketone served as this, this CH, this CH is this CH, this CH. So, this basically gives you 3 carbon. Now, this carbon and this carbon is coming from the aldehyde. So, now I am saying that if you having a this alkyne aldehyde, alkyne aldehyde and this part also this alkyne aldehyde. 
Now, this part basically I said is a CH2 5 in the earlier slide. So, if you have a base alkyne aldehyde, you do a Hardner Wordsworth Emmons reaction, then you do the Lindler catalyst mediated reduction here, and then you reduce this double bond completely. So, or, or initially you can reduce this double bond first and then touch the Lindler one. So, this way basically you can uh, do the synthesis. Now, coming to your uh, remaining part, now see this molecule is a sigma v, this molecule is a sigma v. So, symmetry was maintained. So, now I am saying that probably this compound you can easily easily prepare if you have the required this kind of this kind of propagelic alcohol. Now, depending on the number of carbon you can basically basically figure it out how it can be how it can be easily easily constructed and then for this left hand side and uh, this is also similar kind of. So, you again uh, put a So, basically you need uh, how many carbons? Basically you need uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, this X iodo or bromo. Now, this is P G stands for the protecting group. So, this kind of compound can be easily prepared from corresponding 1, 6 hexane diol by using protecting group chemistry that you all know. So, what you do? You just alkyl create a carbon ion react with this electrophile and then you get this is 6, this is also 6. Then this P g has to be removed, you oxidize this alcohol, this alcohol to get the symmetrical dialdehyde fine. Then you do the horner wordsworth Emmons reaction. Now, once you do the horner wordsworth Emmons reaction your uh, next part is basically you have to do the uh, first this particular double bond reduction. The double bond reduction can uh, eventually be done without touching the triple bond mainly you can use a diimide reduction. So, diimide is uh, very selective reduction which usually do not touch the triple bond and then once double bond reduction was done you can touch the triple bond. So, in that way, but if you the take home message or the main point which you are highlighting is basically your symmetry maintenance. So, you see initial that base alkyne aldehyde base alkyne aldehyde is having the sigma v and remaining all the intermediate remaining all the intermediate all the intermediates having sigma v. So, sigma v was basically maintained throughout the pathway that is why called maintenance of symmetry is absolutely important and that is also uh, give you a good guideline that how you can uh, make your entire pathway. Now, if you uh, go through the earlier lecture, we said that under this uh, symmetry based strategies, we will try to focus uh, mainly 3 or 4 different topics. We said we will be talking about maintenance of symmetry, which we have basically discussed maintenance of symmetry and then we say that there are examples which you have talked about molecules like adamantane and molecule uh, like garudane and also the naturally occurring compound civetone. Uh, next we said that there will be two 
remaining points which will be need to consider the another point which is very important the, the next point it is called local symmetry and pseudo symmetry pseudo symmetry. So, these two point now we are going to discuss now as is it local symmetry the name implies a molecule or a particular segment of a molecule contains a symmetry and that gives a local symmetry and due to presence of the local symmetry the entire molecule is not symmetrical, but like symmetrical molecule such is called a pseudo symmetry. And if I see, I will let us, I will give you a very standard example, we just did not, I say we are having a this kind of compound, I have drawn in a two dimensional way. So, uh, I say this molecule is a perfectly symmetrical, okay. there is absolutely no doubt about that. Now, I am saying I am drawing another molecule and then I am saying that if this cyclohexane part having a y functionality this molecule now does not have perfect symmetry because the presence of this y functional group here makes the molecule not symmetrical, but still the cyclobutane part the cyclobutane part is symmetrical. So, now, this is called local symmetry. The cyclobutane part which has the symmetry is called local symmetry. Eventually presence of y, presence of y is basically the main disturbing factor. So, from a perfect symmetrical molecule now the molecule you can call it as a pseudo symmetry or pseudo symmetric molecule. Now, sometimes there are uh, there are many natural products which will find that uh, they belong to this class pseudo symmetrical class and for this the pseudo symmetrical molecule is always always advisable if you can disconnect the pseudo symmetrical molecule to a local symmetrical molecule or a now local symmetry means this part is perfectly symmetrical. So, then our criteria of perfectly symmetrical molecule where you say that maintenance of symmetry is strict advisable or strict criteria. So, now what we will be trying to do we will uh, talk about some example and then you will find that how this local symmetry and pseudo symmetry is uh, taking a lead role. The example will basically a natural product and this natural product name is bisocalamic acid. You see its structure very carefully the left hand side and right hand side of this molecule having a malic anhydride part okay. and then this two malic anhydride part was joined. The left hand part was joined with a 3 mem 3 methylene bridge and the the bottom part was joined with two methylene bridge. In the top three methylene bridge in the center you are having a ethyl functionality, in the bottom hand side you are having a n propyl functionality. The stereochemistry was there, but we did not discuss about the stereochemistry. Now, this is a natural product whose name is bisocalamic acid fine. Now, if you now analyze the bisocalamic acid, bisocalamic acid should be perfectly symmetrical like this way if there is no ethyl group here. So, minus ethyl the molecule is perfectly perfect symmetry fine. Now, as ethyl is there the molecule becomes pseudo symmetry. So, now we will try to analyze that how this molecule can be retrosynthetically disconnected 
and it was shown that this molecule can be synthesized by or from these two intermediate. So, one of the intermediate is pseudo symmetrical intermediate and one of the intermediate is local symmetrical intermediate. Now, we will explain how. Now, this molecule I said this part this part all almost symmetrical. So, this part is having local symmetry local symmetry the central part seems to be symmetrical except this ethyl group. So, now I am saying that you can basically make this molecule through these two starting material where this one is perfectly symmetrical and this one is having local symmetrical. So, a local symmetrical unit and a pseudo symmetrical unit contains together to give you a pseudo symmetrical molecule. Now, the disconnection part we will now try to focus. At the very beginning we said that the succinic anhydride oh sorry this malic anhydride part can easily be constructed through a oxidative ring cleavage oh sorry this is oxidative ring cleavage of this aromatic nucleus like having 1 4 dimethoxy benzene. The remaining part of this molecule will uh, remain similar we will put a ethyl group here we will putting a n propyl group here. So, this is fine. So, initially this this is again a pseudo sigma v or pseudo symmetrical right. Now, I am saying that this ethyl and this n propyl we need to introduce. So, next what retro was proposed the central thing the ethyl group will be introduced and it has been proposed that the ethyl group can be introduced from a cyano group by a normal FGI. Now, what are the reactions will be doing it here? Cyano group reacting with a methyl magnesium iodide will give you COCH3 then this COCH3 will be converted to corresponding ethyl by a wolf kissner reduction. We are not going to discuss the, the forward path as it is very straightforward. So, now the next retro which I am now proposing it is bit different. We are now saying that the next retro uh, which will be now the all the other parts will be remain similar the two aromatic ring is similar and then we are saying that this C n is there and we will be saying that let us formulate this as a ring. Now, the intermediates earlier one is having pseudo sigma v this is also having pseudo sigma v. So, basically symmetry was kind of maintained. And now, this molecule is basically having this part is local symmetrical, local symmetrical, this part is pseudo symmetrical. Now, why you have to this is basically a normal FGI, this is a normal FGI if you just reduce this double bond you come to the earlier intermediate. Now, this particular fragmentation which was proposed now it is very interesting and this is the limelight of the entire synthesis or the main highlight of the synthesis. This will explain in detail how this mechanism takes place. So, what you say uh, if you have this particular intermediate which you are proposing here this intermediate can be easily converted to this intermediate. Now, how I am saying that I am just writing in this way that if you convert this ketone to corresponding oxime. So, oxime was means now you do a Beckman type of rearrangement. So, means this oxime will be first converted to corresponding this 
OH2 plus and then this will go. We have a electron deficient nitrogen. Now, here if you see this compound you make a oxygen make a oxygen and then once this OH2 plus goes off you will find that this bond fragmentation will basically give you a positive carbonium ion here like this particular bond will fragment or it. Uh, so, in this way basically if it goes it puts its charge here to give you a nitrile and fragments in this way. So, this fragmentation we are talking about it is basically a Bregman type of rearrangement, but it is called Bregman fragmentation. Now, why this carbonium ion is formed? Because this carbonium ion now which is forming here is extremely stabilized because it is a benzylic as well as tertiary. So, now this thing is basically cleaving and you get a cyanide here. So, this C stands for cyanide. Okay. So, the Bregman fragmentation is the crucial. So, we now say that is a very good FGI and the reaction is Beckman type of rearrangement you can think about Beckman fragmentation you can just call it fragmentation. So, now we have to complete the synthesis now you see the starting material uh, can be easily correlated now our starting material can easily be correlated. So, OME OME and the starting material which was given as the initial late can now be linked can now be linked. So, this part this part you are having this corresponding benzyl chloride. So, what you see we say that this ketone does have a this acidic hydrogen as well as this acidic hydrogen. So, you do a successive round of alkylation one with this side the thermodynamically controlled and this side the kinetically controlled you basically get this double alkylated product to a FGI. The Beckman fragmentation was pretty important which will, which will be now just giving you the mechanism uh, just for a very simplified version. We say you have this particular compound. So, you have this Beckman rearrangement which you are proposing or it will basically takes place and then you have this because the drawing has to be little bit bigger otherwise the fragmentation you want visualize clearly. Okay. So, now you say initially this goes up OH 2 plus okay. and then once this goes up it will try to fragment in this way or this way. Now, this way fragmentation give you a positive charge here and this way fragmentation will give a positive charge here. So, this fragmentation will basically give you OME OME this part and then your cyanide now goes there is not it. So, your OME OME. So, fragmentation basically means this bond puts all these electrons to this double bond. So, C triple bond N is formed. Now, you will basically having this carbonium ion. This is absolutely stable carbonium ion, benzylic as well as tertiary. Now, you are having hydrogen. So, this hydrogen will give you the eliminated product, which is one of the intermediate we proposed and this is also the sigma v or pseudo sigma v intermediate. Now, we are basically yes. So, this was the intermediate which was earlier proposed in one of the steps. If you see the symmetry part was strictly maintained strictly maintained. Now, what you do once you have this inter earlier intermediate you first do a 
methyl magnesium iodide as I said you do a Wolf Kishner type reduction and also you do a hydrogenation. So, once you do this 3 FGI together you probably end up with the main core of this molecule where only thing you need to do it the oxidation of this aromatic electron rich aromatic part where you are having this 1 4 dimethoxy benzene. Now, this intermediate is sigma v or pseudo sigma v because this intermediate is pseudo sigma v except if this is n propyl can be removed the molecule is perfect sigma v. This part I say local symmetry, local symmetry this part also I say say local symmetry. So, local symmetry element are there. Okay. Now, the remaining part what uh, was uh, done actually <coughs> normally uh, this uh, kind of transformation they used a uh, late tetraacetate uh, and do a the oxidative deamination first probably initially you do a BBR 3 mediated demethylation of both the aromatic ring. So, you will be having OH, OH first which will basically will use this one little bit later on. So, BBR 3 first demethylate the OH this part is there and then you write this OH and OH. Okay. Now, the oxidation part. So, oxidation you are using a late tetraacetate to basically give you the corresponding quinone, this quinone, this quinone. So, use this quinone and then the reagent which was used is a hot KMNO4, KMNO4 solution to basically clip this double bond to clip this side double bond and then cleavage of other things also means it is like a oxidative cleavage and then what you basically get you get this dicarboxylic acid, dicarboxylic acid, dicarboxylic acid. So, this now undergoing cyclization in space of acidic anhydride and then you get the parent compound whose structure is you basically have this malic anhydride part which you are talking. So, this malic anhydride is you write this way the left hand side you write the right hand side in this way. Okay. You have this ethyl group you have this n propyl group and this is your target molecule. So, the uh, Particularly, this uh, if you do not consider the symmetry part also, the synthesis is very unique because you did couple of functional group interconversion and the key transformation is here the Beckman fragmentation. It was absolutely, absolutely brilliant and the Beckman fragmentation will definitely give you the particular, uh, particular product what are looking for. Now, so uh, probably we will uh, stop it here and uh, next lecture we will try to continue on the similar topic and how we can uh, basically use the concept of local symmetry and pseudo symmetry to disconnect some of the target molecules and see how the guidelines which you have earlier demonstrated we can basically follow those guidelines in a sequential manner. So, okay, have a good time goodbye.